Right, I have another upgrade to show you that I've done on the Myford ML7 and the um, Chinese mini lathe and it's an upgrade um, if you have one of these um, Dixon type quick change tool posts. So the upgrade that I've done on this is the um, central locking nut on the top here. I had this one on there before which is a short um, nut, I think it's the original Myford ML7 one, um, it's fairly worn out and um, when I had that on there um, there was no room to put a ring spanner on there and even the open ended spanner I used would always clash with the um, tool post locking bolts. So to do this um, very quick upgrade, I bought a piece of um, hexagon shaped bar which was um, long enough to do both my um, Myford and the Chinese mini lathe because I have the Dixon type tool post on both and um, I bought the bar um, in bright mild steel because it's nice and easy to machine and easy to thread and um, I bought it so it's three quarters of an inch across the flats and basically drilled through right the way through and tapped with um, 7 16 BSF tap right the way through and then I put it on a um, bench drill and drilled right the way through from one side um, uh, with a core diameter for a 4BA um, tap. Then I tapped 4BA either side. Um, I got a couple of steel 4BA screws and cut them off nice and short and screwed them in tight and um, checked obviously that they didn't come through into the central thread. Um, now you don't have to have both of these screws. Um, all it's uh, there for basically is to um, stop the ring spanner from dropping down too far and clashing with these two tool post locking bolts. So when you're making this nut um, all is you have to um, really watch out for is that you have enough clearance uh, between the top of the nut and the handle of the um, socket wrench that goes on the tool holder um, bolts and that the screw is either in between the um, uh, tool post locking bolts or at the back um, and that is so that this diameter here will not clash with the screw. So when making it it's best to do the thread right the way through, put the nut onto the tool holder, um, tighten it up and then mark this flat here at the back um, for the screw, take it off and drill and tap um, for the 4BA and then you know that when you tighten up that one will be at the back and well away from the locking bolts. So I've made exactly the same nut um, for the Chinese mini lathe for the Dixon type tool post. So it's the same um, dimensions, um, position of screw, uh, brass cap. The only difference is, is the central um, thread, which is 10 millimeter by 1.5 millimeter. And um, this is a great upgrade for me, um, obviously, because I've got both lathes. I've standardized the um, nut so it has the same nut on both and it's quicker to use and there's less tools to use. Also using a ring spanner is much safer, less chance of slipping 
and um, before I go I just want to show you um, the tailstock of the mini lathe um, and an upgrade um, that I've done um, which I hope to do a video about soon so this is my tailstock on the Chinese mini lathe um, I've had problems in the past with this um, cam lock and um, I've had problems with um, the tailstock pushing back when I've used large diameter drills um, so I've improved the um, mechanism on the um, cam lock and I've made an extra lock that goes on the back um, so it's got two locking devices which makes the tailstock rock solid and it won't push back also on this lathe I very often like to take the um, tailstock off of the machine um, particularly when I'm doing angled work with the compound slide so I've done an upgrade on the underside of the tailstock um, which enables me to take the tailstock off um, but also to quickly reinsert it or put it back onto the lathe without having to reach underneath um, to manoeuvre the T-nuts into their correct positions to go down in between the ways um, so it's quickly off but also quickly on every time no problems and um, obviously the T-nuts are held in a set position on a spring mechanism and it saves a lot of messing about and it also saves you from getting your fingers caught underneath um, so I hope to show you how I've done all this um, upgrade in another video Right, just to finish this video, I'd just like to show you how I mix some um, paint on the lathe. Um, I've got to paint my um, shed roof, which is metal, so I bought two nice new tins of hammerite paint. And into this one I have dropped several nice um, size clean um, nuts and bolts and various shaped um, bar end components and um, these can be retrieved later when the um, paint tin is empty I've got this um, nice piece of wood here with a drilled um, center hole in it the wood is or the diameter is um, larger than the diameter of the paint tin I've stuck gaffer tape around the lid just to ensure that it cannot come off and then this one goes on the front like this with the live center in the front um, lock up the tailstock that traps the lid on holds everything steady now it's most important that before you start up that you check that you're in a very low gear or low speed if you start up in a high speed or run it in a high speed you're very likely to have an expensive laundry bill so it's most important to check that um, basically you let the lathe run and um, at first it will be quiet in the paint tin and then after a period of time you'll find that you can hear the metal components in the paint uh, clanking around a bit and then you know that the paint is mixed and um, basically it's start up and let it run It's most important never to leave a lathe running on its own um, so you can do this job while you're doing something else in the shed and um, it's a great way to mix the paint rather than stirring it 